Hey, and welcome back. It's Professor Hendricks, and today I'd like to talk about iterable objects and for loops. Now, iterable objects in Python go hand in hand with for loops, and the two are directly related. Think of an iterable object as any object that has some countable number of elements or components, and it has some notion of next. It has some notion that if I'm at a particular one of those components, if I use next, I can get to the next one of those components. You want to think about lists in this context. List might be the classic example of an iterable object, but also sets, tuples, and dictionaries can also be iterable objects, and also strings. So let's see some examples here. So if I type Python and I enter the Python terminal, I could type in something like create a list and say L is equal to some list, let's just say 13579, and I could say 4x in L. And so that's essentially the beginning structure of the for loop. I need to have a for, and I need to have some sort of statement like this. And so in this case, for x in a list L. And so I'm going to print these out for simplicity. And you can see that I've looped through all the elements of that list, visited them one at a time, and printed them out. Now, what's going on here is a couple of really interesting things. First is this x variable here is implicitly being created within the for loop. And that's perhaps hard to see first time you encounter a for loop, but what's happening is, is basically you're creating this variable x and it's being assigned a value one at a time for each term within that list. Secondly, we see all the other components of the control structure. We see the keyword, in this case, for. We see the colon, which is really important. And we see the indentation after the colon in each line that's indented will be carried out along with the others within this for loop statement. Let's do another quick example. How about a string? So if I said DNA is equal to, and I don't know, I created some random DNA sequence, and I said 4B in DNA, that's also perfectly fine. I can print out that base in that DNA sequence. And we see that in this case, this is probably not the most effective way to deal with this. But we could imagine looping through and concatenating things together. So for example, I might say, I might be able to use this to create a complementary DNA sequence, which might be part of a step to create a reverse complement. And I could actually loop through these DNA sequences in reverse by doing something like this and say print B. So that's perfectly valid to loop through the sequences in reverse. So I want you to think about how would you go about using this to create a reverse complement DNA sequence. And the way you might do it, give you a hint, is to use dictionaries. Consider a dictionary where the key is a nucleotide and the value is its complementary nucleotide. So in other words, C would be the key and the value would be G. A would be a key and its value would be T, and so on. And you could use this to loop through the characters of the DNA sequence and concatenate to a growing string the complementary nucleotide. You could also loop through the DNA sequence in reverse and go from the you know, reverse direction and concatenate the complementary nucleotide and get the reverse complement. So I'll leave that as an exercise for now. We'll come back to that later. Let me just show you one more quick example of if I were to put an if statement within a for loop, so how about this? If I created something called the odds, maybe this is the odd int, so I might say list of range of 1, comma, let's say 100 in increments of 2. So odds is all the odd ints from 1 to 99. And if I also just said for i in range of hundred and I said if I in odds print I comma space is odd I define my for loop using I as my variable to as an int to range over all ints from 0 to 99 in this case and then I'm checking within that for loop if I is in odds but very carefully I want to indent yet again within that if statement. So I have two levels of indentation 
describing the nested structure here. And so remember, I'm here in the Python terminal, not in a script. And so by hitting enter, I get those ellipsis points again. And I need to hit enter yet again to exit that pair of ellipsis points and actually carry out the code. And you can see it's going to do the print statement every time one of those variable, the variable int, is in that odds list. You can also nest for loops, for example. I can show you a quick example like that. So I might say 4x in range of, let's just say, 6. And I might say 4y in range of 6. And I might print x comma y. And you can see that I basically printed the pairs of ints from 0 up to, but not including 6. And you can see that every pair is represented here um, in all these different combinations. So with that, I'll close this lecture on for loops and iterable objects, and I'll see you next time.